Whoa, what's up? What's up? This your boy Lil Ya, aka Mr. Yo Hoyt Man, half up? of the notorious group UNLV. You see? What's up? What's up? This your boy Tech Nine, the other half of UNLV. You tuned in to No Lazine. You dig? This episode is brought to you by the Loyalty Club, one of the hottest brands out where they keep their items limited and only for the loyal few. Check us out online at theloyaltyclub.us or if you're in the New Orleans area, you can check us out at our flagship store, 841 Fulton Street. You already know what time it is. Only for the loyal few club time. Man, I want to start by saying, I'm like, welcome home, man. You know, I appreciate that. But long live on a yellow boy. Yeah. And before we Rest start. In peace, my dog, yellow. And I also want to give you, you know, if y'all flowers for being one of the first, like, rap Hardcore groups coming out in New Orleans and having a city and, and, and like rocking with y'all. Yeah. So like, and before the people who don't know, I'm like, tell them where y'all from. We from Uptown, Third Wall, Six and B. I'm originally from the Mel for Me Projects. Uh, my mom moved out to Projects when I was like 12 years old, and that's when we re relocated to like uh, Six and Baron. Right. Cause I just seen a picture of um, and like you and Baby in the Mel. Right, it's like a you know right. it's like a known picture. So I was like, man, you know, it be like even though every child rep, I'm like sixty but wrong, but you you know, but you still it yeah, be like hung I'm in the milk. I'm definitely milk boy. Definitely. Still milk. <laughs> yeah. Like you know, back in the day, you know, it but people couldn't actually go to the milk. It but let you actually. I'm like, it but let you. I'm like really. I'm like knew someone. Yeah. And so you could tell like you know it but you had like you know it but close people and like y'all chilled up. I'm like in the porch we in the trenches. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In the trenches, man. <laughs> got a got an all day pass. That's where I'm from, you know, and uh through through my music I always made sure that I I, I relive my MELF days or I speak on the MELF, you know what I'm saying? Cause that's where I'm from. So I definitely gotta keep them in my, in mind when I'm writing raps or, or just talking doing interviews or whatever. Shout out to everybody from the MELF, man, everybody I grew up with. Clio, Thelia. All that. <laughs> Martin Luther King, you know what I'm saying? Everything. Gotcha. And so let's bring it back. Like, you know, I'm like, when did both of y'all first started um, actually becoming one? I'm like, music artists. Well, what do y'all can think about that? Uh, when we met, we was basically, you know, we had a, we had a genuine interest in, in the band. You know, we was in the band, so... Once we started the, the hip hop and rapping thing, we was together already. You know what I'm saying? But the, the music started. I would, I would say the band. Junior high school. Junior high, junior seventh high grade. School, seventh grade, playing in the band, and just had a genuine interest for music. He had a genuine interest for music on his end. You know, with 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 Unk and everybody, and my brother influenced me. As far as the rap music as a kid in the mail, if I would watch them go do little talent shows at the church and stuff like that. So I always was interested in it, but I never really had nobody to click clack and do it with because Big Bro ain't really used to let me rock with him like that, just coinciding. So once me and y'all connected and realized that we both had the same interest, we formed a, uh, a group called the Sporty MCs. It was consist of me and him and Lil Sus, uh, Keita J. And uh, we was entering talent shows all over the city, and and um, we actually was was pretty good at it because we was winning them. And it, it was they were so amazed because Kitty was like five years old, and our yeah. raps was all positive raps. So so we would just capture the audience like that, and we was winning first prize every time. You know that's when the city really used to have fun things like that going on, talent shows. You know, giving people a chance or. Or even even your your local high schools or junior high will have talent shows. You know what I'm saying? And anybody could enter them. You didn't have to attend that school to enter them. And, and we just made sure, you know, our moms made sure we stayed active and they would enter us in them talent shows and we'll take off. Gotcha. So you know, hey, but what do y'all think happened in y'all life? Hey, before y'all to go from like rapping about positive stuff <laughs> to turning it to. Up uh, <coughs> niggas living violent. The environment we was in, I would say. I mean, during during our during the era when we was rapping about crack, it had just really hit the area, you know, hit the hoods and and we was just learning about it and we you know, were figuring out what it was doing people and you know what I'm saying, really watching what it's doing people. So I mean 
our environment didn't change right then and there. We growing up in this shit, so we eventually became a product of our environment. You know what I'm saying? That, I think that's what made our fans so loyal and connected and felt so connected to us because what we talked about, it, it wasn't like just songs. It wasn't stuff we made up or whatever. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's actually, if we telling you we chilling on the corner, a six and Barone, you can get in your car and actually come spend the bin and see us on the and corner. Done six it and every Barone. day. People and, used to do that all the time. And the fans knew that. So, you know, it, it they they kinda locked in with us because they know we wasn't just no studio rappers. And as far as, you know, what you're asking about, which was a good question, how do we turn from rapping about positive stuff to just what we end up rapping about and uptown niggas living violent, man, it just what we was around, you know. You gotta, you gotta think. I was growed up in the, in the bloody mail for me and project. You know, as a kid, I'm seeing dope needles on the ground and people getting killed right in front of me. And then I go to Six and B, and and it really wasn't so murderous around there, but everybody was a hustler. You know what I'm saying? So basically, all that was instilled in me, and that's what I had to talk about. You know. Gotcha. So, you know, I want y'all to bring. Bring it back, Ebda. Hey, I want to tell. I want y'all to tell us, Ebda. Hey, I'm like exact year, hey, but that y'all created. I'm like UNLV, and actually, hey, but when did y'all meet? I'm like, meet. I'm a yellow boy. UNLV was created in '92. That's when we decided to create the name and everything in '92. You know, and decided to go back in the bars and start picking up the mic, doing our thing again. Yellow was was initiated in the group in '93. Our first album came out, uh, Six and Barons, our first album came out in 93. We had a single I was called Another Trick before Yellow actually joined the group. And late, like I said, later in 93, when the album came out, Six and Barone, that's when he was became a member I, of us. I actually was living with Yellow, you know what I'm saying? I had some problems at home. Me and mom was clashing because I had to cross that fence and was in the streets and she found like a quarter or two of dope or coke in, in my room and we got into it so she put me out in yellow yellow was the only child and we was kind of yeah you know me and y'all always grew up as brothers and best friends but uh yellow was somebody that i pulled off the porch and he he would do dirt with me you know what i'm saying i could get yellow to do shit with me that y'all ain't gonna do you know what i'm saying and uh we kind of bonded like that, and he was like, man, you could come over here, you know. But at the same time, me and Yai, we still doing our thing with the music, and it, it had begun to blow up. And Yellow wanted a part of it. He wanted to be a part of it, you know, even though he didn't know nothing about rap. But he was... He was musically inclined. Musically inclined, he, he inclined like you know. Yellow drums and percussion yeah, he at was, church. Yeah, definitely musically you inclined. You know, he definitely had melody and tones so it wasn't hard for me to show him basically you know i don't all i had to show yellow was how to count a 16 and what bars was and how to really format a song and once i showed it to him he took clean off you know it, it didn't it didn't take nothing at all yellow you know he became one of some would say he was one of uh new orleans best lyricists you know what i'm saying arguably or whatever but uh, it didn't take long at all. And, and um, during the time I'm living with him, you know, he kind of like slick side gave me an ultimatum, man. Introduce me to baby now, man. Or mom, you know, on the, on the cool, he ain't saying it in them words. But if you're from the streets, you can feel a vibe. And you you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, I'm like, all right, yeah. mom said you got to go. But, but introduce me to the group, you know what I'm saying? So it kind of went like that. So, you know, I, I brought the idea to Yah. You know, and y'all wasn't really so with it in the beginning, you know what I'm saying? And uh, eventually I convinced him. Even even uh, Baby and Slim, them, they, they didn't really want us to add nobody else to the group. They were satisfied with what we was doing, oh. you know. But And so basically, it was like, I'm like, UNLV was already one, I'm like, group, actually with Cash Money, I'm um, actually before, I'm yeah. a yellow boy, okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah, right. we signed with them. With the single, you know, another bitch. I'm gonna talk some more shit about another bitch. You know, we did that ourselves, and um, it got so hot in the streets. You know, one way or another, uh, Baby and Slim got their hand on 
on one of the copies, and they uh, arranged the meeting with the with, uh, cat that we actually recorded the Shout song. Shout out by. to T Bone, he produced yeah. a, uh, another and, bitch um, too. That's how we ended mm. up linking up with them, you know. But once we linked up with them, they re released that, that single, um, you know, under professionally under the label because really. We had it bumping in the streets. We were, uh, had a two-sided cassette tape in, in my living room, and we would just dub it and make copies and sell them all over the city for five dollars. Gotcha. So, you know, well, and since y'all signed to, um, you know, Cash Money already, but I ain't jump onto that part. So, actually, I'm like, how did y'all meet Baby and Slim? We met Baby and Slim through. Getting uh, selling our tape for five dollars, like like he mentioned, we had a, a the song another bitch, and we would, we would we would take turns doubling them, you know. Um, you know, your kids probably don't know what a tape is, but it was an actual tape that we'll take turns dubbing the song on each side of the tape every night, and we'll sell them for five dollars. And Baby and Slim got a hold of the tape from who I don't know, but they got we got word that they wanted to meet us. You know, they were starting a record label, and, you know, we were interested in it. Gotcha. So, and so, I'm like, did they pull up on, uh, did they pull up on fucking, I'm like, did they pull up on, I'm like, Six and Barone? Nah, no, we I'm actually met them at the office. <laughs> yeah, okay. They didn't pull up on Six and Barone. We met them at the office. They had an office on Gravia. Gravia. Yeah. Like, I, I think that was their first office building. Hey, but that's dope, you know, just even having one, like, you know, if an office, right. like in the early 90s. Yeah, right, it was yeah, cool. Right. It was cool, right. man. We thought we was going to sign like with, with Def Jam somebody at the time. You know what I'm saying? We we only wanted oh, they to lead out cut the red a record. carpet, huh? Yeah, that's right. That's dope. Gotcha. So you know, hey, but y'all drop y'all first album. Hey, but then y'all you know bring. I'm the yellow boy, you know, in the group. Mm -hmm. So like you know, how did the song? You know, it, it, you know, it, like me and you talked about it, but like, how did the song come about? Drag him by the river. <laughs> uh, drag him in the river, man. Drag him in the river. I'm sorry, I said it wrong. Yeah, <laughs> Yella, Yella was a real. He was real competitive, man. Yella was real competitive. For one, for one reason or another, you know, y'all really. He he know the story. My brain fried, man. I don't, you know, but uh, mystical. You know, he was like, do some little subliminal diss in his songs. But like I say, when you from the streets, you catch shit like that. You know what I'm saying? So we like, all right, he dissing. You know, he, like I said, Yellow was real competitive, man. It didn't take no time for us to go in there. And, you know, on, on every project that we uh, put out with Cash Money, we would put out, you know, songs collectively, all three of us, and each one of us would do a solo song on the album. You know what I'm saying? With uh, each album. Uh, each album. That was the format. You know what I'm saying? And uh, you know, I credit that to Slim and Baby. You know, that that was a format that they came up with. And it was also showcase, you know, single skills between each one of the artists and and uh we all agreed that, that you know, go ahead and let Yellow get back at him. And man, he <laughs> went in and did his thing, you know. Like I said, Yellow was very competitive. Right. And so far as my knowledge, ever just talking to y'all, you know, I'm like mystical acting with the, but he acting with the like, um, he acting with the, I'm like high school with y'all, right? Yeah, yeah. And but he yeah. didn't go to high school with, and with I'm a like, yellow one. No, cause so yellow was and that so that whole Eastern. time. So I yeah. wanted to always ask one of y'all, right. like, how did he yellow. really feel about mystical? I mean, he knew mystical. All us said, bro, you know what ribbon is? You from New Orleans? Yeah. All we used to do was rib his ass daily. Right. Yellow came a year after Mystical graduated, but he knew Mystical. Okay. You know, right. Mystical knew him or whatever, and his relationship was the same with him, you know, with, like, like it was with us. We used to rib the shit out of him, dog. You know what I'm saying? He used to rib us. It's on, on site. You know, on that's site. That's what it was. Start. You know, it's you know when like, he wanted to do that rap yeah. beef shit, that was, you know, that, that was something that probably stemmed from the relationship we had and so he didn't take ribbing each other. Either, nah, okay. hell no. He started. Gotcha. He wanted to yeah. do that shit. <laughs> yeah. He wanted to do that, man. But I'm gonna tell you, man, Yellow, he didn't he didn't he he was one gear. You know what I'm saying? One way. So Yellow, in my opinion, Yellow took it serious. 
Because that, he, see, he he literally yeah. he, <laughs> Y'all ain't give a damn. That's what I'm saying. Like you know, all his story. Y'all ain't give a damn. Told me one day that dude pulled a, a strap out. I was like, man, he couldn't have been serious, bro. It wasn't. He was like, yeah, dog. He pulled out. I was like, man, yeah. He said, yeah, bro. I was like, damn, dog. I wasn't. I can't say he did or he didn't, but <laughs> I know for us, you know what I'm saying. That shit. Hey, but we hear so many stories of Yellow, but like no one knows him like y'all do. Right. Right. So like I always want to hear from y'all. It's like I didn't want to hear from nobody else but y'all. Cause like, you know, y'all the ones who actually actually was in the studio with him, went on the road with him. I didn't I even would know say that you know. Something like Mystical Hell, right. one unpredictable. Right. That's probably one of the best words to describe him. Yeah. You know what right. I'm saying? Unpredictable. And like I say, if if I had to put money on it, I would say he took it personal. He took it serious while at the same time we knew what, what Mystical wanted to do, you know what I'm saying? He was on one end of the city with, with a company, we on another city. So, you know, at, at that time, he was real smart when it came to marketing, and we, right. we agreed to it. Just come home from the service, and we doing right. our thing thing in New Orleans, you know what I'm saying? So, I want to hear it out both of y'all about, like, in the early 90s, how did y'all really feel about Partners in Crime and also, I'm like, Big Boy Records? Big Boy Records, I mean, we... It was it was it was like damn dog UNLV PNC UNLV Cash Money PNC Big Boy you know what I'm saying yeah so we had to like if if we even though we was cool we was you know fucking with the, the rest of the label and shit it was really like yeah dog they 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 the enemies you know what I'm saying they, they the enemies but PNC on the other hand that was that was some real beef and yeah, my man. my main thing for not liking them dude because I felt like they didn't like us and they even knew us. So that but, uh, that's that's what I was. I think basically that was more the egos of the CEOs of those companies too, because, um, you know, we 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 used to link up with anybody and do music with them, whatever. But if you if I had to say it, I didn't think I I just don't think that Baby and Chuck they was like more competitive. So, you know, when we we wind up doing big shows and. You know you will feel the tension. You know what I'm saying, and it and it could pop off at any time. You know, even I remember uh, one night, uh, Mr. Mean and Yellow even had a fight, a real physical fight. You know, hey, so who won? He used to get, get to that point. <laughs> I got a mess with man, you. They, they, they got it in, man. Yeah. I ain't gonna yeah, lie. They both and I'm gonna say, in. and I'm gonna say before we go in. forward, ever like you know, ever like you know. It was shout out Mr. Mina because you know he it was all the stories I hear. He always held his in. He was, he was, yeah, Mina was Mina was a soldier. Yeah, he yeah. was a soldier, a soldier dog. Man. We looked at Mina like the 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 head, uh, like the, like the snake head. You know what I'm saying? Like we we get this dude. We the, the other two. You know what I'm saying? That's how we was looking at it, bro. We always respected all of them, but it was just Mina. He was like like the face of PNC. You know, you chop the face down, you 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 good. Yeah. You know, but. Nowadays, you know, you know all, all that beef was right. that was real beef. I don't want these little dudes to think that shit was was, was planned or nothing. That was some real shit. Right. You know what I'm saying? But nowadays, you know, we put shit aside. But y'all grown men, you know. We grown yeah. men, and you know, but a lot of people still grown men and don't 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 get along. Yeah. You know how how it should be. Not song. just for business. You know, we deal with them on business level, but I, I deal with with Mina on personal levels as well. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I interviewed, I'm like, Miss T, and she also told me something about, you know, the big boy Cash Money. She said, you know, like, her being on Cash Money side and, like, just hearing about the stories, it was more like everyone in the city knew, like, you know, hey, but Chuck was playing with some real money. Hey, but you mm -hmm. heard about the big boy parties and the pool parties and, like, you know, Baby and Slim wasn't doing it at the time. So, like, I want to know, like, you know, in the early 90s, but like you know, for us being on Cash Money, if how it was for y'all. Man, as far as the streets concerned, dog, I didn't I, honestly. We was we came from the street when we got on a label, and if them dudes was in the street like like Chuck was in the street or whatever, I think we would have known about it. Right. You know what I'm saying? And them niggas hell they, they hid it from us. The thing about it is, you know what I'm saying? It they, they was they, out there. They really they really wanted to, you know. Get from off that side, so you know. Uh, back then, Slim still not no flash guy, and back then, 
you baby wasn't no flashy person. I mean, you, you know, he had shit, but you know, you wouldn't know where it come from unless you dealt with him. And, and, and he had and to yeah, turn to the number one stunner name way. ain't come out to yeah. you know if he was off the. If he was like B thirty straight up, right? Yeah, all <laughs> shit like that. Some Bubble people, and some people, and some all people that, sell you know? dope and and want to be known as the biggest dope dealer, and some people sell dope. That's because that's what they got to do, and they try their best to hide the fact that that's what they're doing. And I, I believe that's what baby demeanor was opposed At to, first. to uh, Chuck demeanor. You know, the, everybody, the city know he was a drug dealer, and, it, and it, it's almost like you didn't... He didn't try to hide the fact that he was right. a drug dealer. You know what I'm saying? I mean, he let the... Like, he basically just... He, Chuck was moving like, you know, if you got to know him, <coughs> you know, and you got to you gotta know... They be like, what I'm on. Right. Because, you right. know, because I heard, like, you know, they be like, Big Boy had artists that was, like, and that was really, like, promoting, you know, gangs. And, mm, you know, cash yeah. money. Then, you know, like, everybody know, if here in New Orleans, right. like, you know, if we just not into gangs and all that stuff. We not right. into Christian and blood was, and all man. that. Right. So, hey, but with that being said, we're going to move forward from that one on, you know, bring us back to the day. Yeah, but that y'all got that call that you know, that you know. I'm like Yellow Boy was actually, it was actually I'm like murdered. Man, it was what about four o'clock in the morning. I got a call. I had just came home. Oh, probably about two weeks before that, I had came home and I was staying by my aunt, my aunt, cause I had to do a little real range and shit like that. And I was by my aunt, she woke me up and told me that Yellow was on the news. He had just got murdered. Man, I was like, right. what? As for me, I mean, you know, it ain't no secret. Uh, if you our age, you grew up on our music, so you grew up knowing the, the upside of our career and the downsides of our career, and it ain't no secret that me and Yellow struggled with drugs during that time. Um, and I always had that little person in the back of my head telling me that I'm tripping, you you tripping, you know you ain't supposed to be fucking around like that. So during the time when Yellow got killed, I, I felt like, you know, man, I gotta get my mind right. So I I checked myself into a rehab. And um I really don't take the credit for that. You know, I feel like it was only God that moved my feet in that direction because it wasn't a day that me and Yellow didn't ride together. Or wherever he was, I was. Wherever I was, he was. So who's to say that I wouldn't have been in that truck with him? You know what I'm saying? But, you know, I moved kind of cautious. You know, it, you know, if I was out, I don't believe that that would have happened to him because ain't no anybody going to get in that truck with me to this day. I don't know. That's like the only cat that's going to even ride with me, you know, just to be riding with me or even sit behind me. You know what I'm saying? Just reflecting on the stories of how he got killed. And um, while I'm in the rehab, you know, I asked him to come on, come with me. And he didn't, you know, he ain't want to come. You know, it's kind of hard to convince somebody to do something when they ain't ready to do it. You know what I'm saying? They got to be on their time. And, um, yeah, you got to be on their time and God time also. So while I'm in the rehab, I get the call from um, a family member that he got killed. And and for people who don't know or that never struggle with addiction, when you in a rehab, at least back then, I don't know how it is now, you can't just go in and leave. You know, it's some kind of stipulation, 72 hours. So they, they really didn't want to let me leave out after I got the phone call. I guess it's like detrimental to my uh, what I'm, the process of me going through the rehab or whatever. So I, I really just pulled some shit off and made them put me out. I just started throwing and breaking up furniture and all that shit there. So they was like, you know, fuck the rules, he got to go. You know, which worked in my favor because I was trying to get out of there anyway. You know what I'm saying? So that's basically how how I got the news of, of his murder. Gotcha. So you know, for someone who you know ever watching this interview right now, ever like, what's your advice? I'm like to them. It was someone who's you know, ever like battling with um you know, I'm like drug abuse. Man, it's you really have to wanna uh, change your lifestyle, what you're doing, and definitely who you who you hanging with. You know what I'm saying? My you know, like I, I told on another story, I was I was really 
tricked into uh, start using drugs. My drug of choice was heroin. Yellow drug of choice was heroin. And the, and the big old thing was if you, you snort a bag of dope, you know, you're going to fuck all night long or whatever. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, it, it, it was true. It's just like some people might... Before they hook up with their girl, they might go get a strong drink or whatever. That you're making, you know, maybe feel like that's going to make them go longer or better or whatever. And and back then, instead of pills and all this, it was heroin that that would, uh, you know, stimulate you even more. But the story that people don't tell you is that after you doing this shit for so long, you know, your body become dependent on it. You know, and if you was in the streets like we was in the streets, you know, that was like a daily thing for us. You know, we go in the studio, work, and then we hit the phone to see who who it's going to be tonight. You know what I'm saying? So if I'm snorting a bag of dope every night because I'm hooking up with a different broad every night, then now I'm unconsciously, my body then got used to this shit. So now let's say, okay, next week I'm chilling. I ain't much fucking with these hoes. Now I realize, what the fuck, I feel funny. You know what I'm saying? That's because I ain't done got high. Now, I'm, now I realize I'm addicted. And these days, today, that shit done shifted over to the perks and the lean. And it's the same thing. You know what I'm saying? With the opioids, you know, you drank that shit for so many days, for so many days, and then when you wake up, you're going to realize you need it. And anybody who watching this, and who gonna watch this and if you actively popping perks and sipping lean on the regular you know exactly what the fuck i'm talking about because that day you decide you ain't gonna do it you might don't want to do it but your body telling you you better go get you a drink or a couple of pills because you ain't gonna feel right until you do it gotcha. so you know if you're back home if your finally could actually put out a brand new album so you know i want you to tell the world you know and like what y'all have like coming up right now? We just released a, our first single off the album called Next. It was produced by a kid named Fizzle Beats. Young Nice, real, real nice with it. You know, he up and coming doing his thing, you know what I'm saying? Giving us that sound that we was looking for. You know, uh, we have a new single that we're about to release maybe like another week. We're actually right. shooting a video for it this weekend. You know, it's called Closing In. It's all uh, features. Uh, Rockstar, Rockstar Beasy. My bad. Rockstar Beasy doing his thing. Also, he done a track with it. So, uh, we, we, we looking, we, we, we on the right direction, dog. We definitely headed in the right this, path with this music, This next record man. that y'all uh, gonna hear from us is really it's gonna change some shit up, man. It's a hard record. Definitely a hard record. And we got to, uh, we, when I first came home, you know, I couldn't move, so I was on an uh, ankle monitor. So the only thing I could do is maybe go to the studio, record, and be, before I be back in. So during that time, we laid down some shit. And um, we just putting it together and, and figuring out which singles and, and uh, what songs. But after this single, we're going to go ahead and drop an a, drop a EP. And uh, right now, we in uh midst of just picking what songs that we're going to put on it. And just we just gonna drop it, man. And we, we also trying to active. do visuals for everything, you know what I'm saying? Not yeah, just brand new game record. Now, brand know. new game, yeah. right? So. Cause I remember back in the day when y'all was, you know, yeah, like yeah. making music. Music videos was, it was how much? <laughs> man, <laughs> damn, you're a million dollars for a video, boy, yeah. for real. So you know, y'all go. Yeah, so you know, so. We'll do visual, and we plan on doing visuals for some of our old music. Right. You know, as well. So, because during that time we did, I mean, we had the opportunity to, to uh, do a few visuals, but it wasn't as popular as it is now. So we just gonna, uh, you know, capitalize on how the game is right now, how easy it is to tap into your fans, because you know, back then we really had to actually jump out of, out of cars ourselves and put posters on the wall. So now it's really just, you know, you tap in and, and, and click on everybody you already fucking with. with one. It's easier now. Yeah. Much easier. Much man. easier. So, like, I don't be getting why, you know, music artists always, I'm, like, complaining now because, like, you know, it's, it's <laughs> so much easier. Like, like back in the day when y'all was, you know, 
coming up, you had to actually get on the road and like you know go actually meet people, mm-hmm. right? And like you know go to the, like you know and like go to the radio stations, and do drops, do everything, right. like if like face to face. Now, like now you can do everything from your phone, computer, exactly. and everything. Your phone, all you need is a phone or a laptop, and you in there. Yep, <laughs> that's your team right there. <laughs> The goddamn iPhones. So being in the music industry for over over 20 plus years? 30. Now? 30? 30, 30 now. Oh, about yeah. to touch 30 years. Oh, that says a lot, huh? <laughs> yeah. 92. Our first single came out 92. Yeah. That's 32 years, huh? Yeah. All right. Well, being in the music industry over 32 years, every like, what do y'all, I'm like, enjoy most about it? And like, tell us, I'm like, what do y'all actually, I'm going to hate about it? For as me, what I enjoy most about it is listening to new artists and uh, listening to new music because it inspired me. And uh, probably, I, I probably would say what I enjoy the most about it is being able to drop new content and people still like it. People still fuck with it after all these years. You know what I'm saying? It's being able to stay relevant. Um, far as my lyrics or whatever you know what i'm saying it you know when i drop a record it uh it don't sound like you know some old old shit i'm you know we able to, to drop it and and be right there with and, and compete with what's going on right now what i like about it i i think i still like the creative process of music period like you know what i'm saying starting out with with, with nothing just building something like, you know what I'm saying, and seeing a finished product. Yeah. I also like the, the, the perks of the business, you know, being able to reap and really get paid for our, our work and shit nowadays, you know what I'm saying? But uh, I still don't like the fame, so that's probably the only thing I don't like about it, mm-hmm. you know? Gotcha. So, you know, hey, but what's your, like, you know, all right, what's y'all advice um, acting to someone who, like, you know, they been watching this right now, thinking about jumping in, you know, into the music game? The first thing you need to know when you jump in it, you can't quit. If you plan to make it, you can't quit, period. Because <laughs> you you'll never make it if you quit. Yeah. I, I would say, man, just uh, be passionate about what you're doing. It's really not a game, you know. It's just be passionate about, about your work. And it'll work out. Gotcha. So, you know, I personally would say that, you know, y'all were actually before your time. Because, you know, you said earlier that, you know, back in the day when y'all was making albums, you know, Baby and Slim would actually make y'all do like one solo. So right. I would say that, you know, y'all were actually the first Hot Boys. Hey, so how would y'all feel about I that? I think the Hot Boys was a recreated UNLV with a full member. I always yeah. say that. Yeah, well, when, at the time when we began to split up, you know, uh, the label had to recreate that same dynamic. You know what I'm saying? We needed a, they needed a group. And, uh, you know, I was right there when he was beginning to put that shit together. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but at the same time, we was still... On the contract with them, but you know it was like we we it, at one point we was learning more, at but in the same sense we was kind of like getting a big head, you know, and it just we were becoming a problem. All right. You know what I'm saying? Right. It's, it's like we was at the we was at, at 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 that stage we was we felt like we knew everything we needed to know to to be and to do what we always wanted to do to have our own. Right. Right. You know what I'm saying? We always just we, we never wanted to stay rappers, bro. Never. Right. You know I what think I'm one of the biggest things is we wanted to establish what Slim and Baby had established, you know, because we was we was grown. You know, he got he got uh B G and Wayne, you know, they was actually kids. But uh when we locked in with them, we was like eighteen 19 so we had to start growing and got into our 20s and me and y'all always did have that entrepreneur mentality you know what i'm saying when when our moms couldn't afford to get us some ballots we we would go sell popcorn at the saints games or or do whatever it was you know 
in in a legal manner so we can get what we we, we want. And right. once we saw them, you know, making this legal money like this, we knew we could do it because that's where our head always was at anyway. Cut grass, whatever we had to do to make money to do what we had to do. So we, you know, we wanted that part of the game and they wasn't really ready to let us go right. to do that yet. You know what I'm saying? So that's kind of where, and, and we definitely were stubborn and they on, you know, they, they were stuck on how they was moving. So that's where we clashed at. Gotcha. So being home now, like, you know, hey, but moving forward, I mean, what's your plans? Man, just to keep on dropping music. Of course, we didn't got oldest, but it's almost like our skills didn't sharpen. You know, I got a chance to lay back, get my mind right, you know, get my body right, my thoughts together. So, you know, right now, I just, just hit the ground running, man. We recorded a bunch of music, and, you know, I set a lot of short-term goals for myself, long-term goals. I'm, I'm going to school recording, making sure me and y'all stay sharp in the studio. And, and um, you know, the end goal is to be able to put the mic in in our, some of our artists' hands. You know what I'm saying? People that we grooming, put the mic in their hand and, and guide them and make sure that they don't have to hit some of the bumps in the road that we hit. You know what I'm saying? But music is always, that that's always going to be in the picture, definitely, no matter what I do. You know, right now I'm going to school for uh, marketing, so I plan to use all that, you know, within our company. You know what I'm saying? Gotcha. So, you know, I'm like, how does it feel when y'all can see brand new music artists? I'm like, you know, I'm like 30 years, you know, actually, actually still being like fans of y'all music and actually... I'm like, re actually, I'm like, re I'm like creating, you know, some of y'all songs. I think it helped keep us relevant. You know right. what I'm saying? I mean, and, and it also shows what a lot of them, they, they paying homage. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So that, that feels good to me. Yeah, we don't take offense to it because, you know, if this cat over here, you know, he recreate one of our songs or one of our songs. Yeah, like y'all say, he paying homage. And it actually just keeps a door open for us. Now, when the ones that just do it, trying to be disrespectful or whatever, don't reach out to us and just just do it. You know what I'm saying? We got to go after them. That's what we got to do. To, you know what I'm saying? For us, oh, publishing rights and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? Copyright infringements and all that kind of shit. So, I mean, we ain't slipping on that in because our business street. Right. So, I mean, that that helps even that that even helps too. You know. Cause a lot of niggas fuck with our music, music and, and don't really be paying homage. I noticed that, you know what I'm saying? They just be on some jack shit. And and if you feel like you doing that, you know what I'm saying? They, we we about to you about to be working for us with that same record. You know what I'm saying? And you know, hey, but that's kind of dope that you take you know, hey, the legal way. Yeah. Back in the day, you know. Oh yeah. You don't know. Yeah. UNLV stands for Uptown Niggas Living Behind. Right. right. But you know the greatest thing is you know. Y'all can actually sit here today and just and just think about all the stuff y'all did and y'all here now and like people giving y'all you know but y'all flowers and everything. Yeah, man, that, that's it's been a journey, bro. It. It's been a journey, dog. You know, if you ask me, man, it's more of God's work than than the work of me and him. Facts. Because we had a track record of fucking some shit up. You know what I'm saying? That just was the track. We record. always was the. As a give, heads, like bro. you know, for the people who don't know, we give them as some type of, of like example. You're looking of like at fucking two two six black connection two two six. <laughs> a lot of people don't even know what that mean, but the ones that do know that 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 that's, that's where it originated from. Just UNLV, bro. You know what I'm saying? Fucking shit up, man. Just just not giving a damn about consequences after right. our actions, and now, you know, today. It matters, man, because they got people that depending on us, you know. If you have kids now, yeah, yeah, that's man. older. Facts. Right. So that you know. If, if you probably have grandkids. So we, yeah. we like trying to change yeah. the narrative that we help, you know what I'm saying? Really, for especially for the drugs and, you know what I'm saying, pushing that type of shit. Right. You know, we 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 still in the game, so we're we not, we not pushing that no more because we learn from that. Right. You know what I'm saying? So we 
trying to, you know, just expand our mind and give us some new music without taking, you know, all the, all the dumb shit from niggas that just ain't right. growing mentally. You know what I'm when, saying? Because ain't nothing like an old fool. Right. We ain't trying to be no old fool. You bro. know, back then, if, if it's anything that I can go back and change, you know, as far as life lessons, I'm glad I went through the things that I went through now because it taught me and it built me and formed me who I am right now. But if there's anything that I could change, it would be probably making songs to encourage, you know, young people to go and snort a bag of dope or this, that, and the other, you know, because it, it really was just detrimental to my people. You know what I'm saying? You know, we really had songs saying, go get your bag of dope. And I had people who would actually go get a bag of dope, hunt me down to show me they got a bag of dope. You feel what I'm saying? And the crazy part is I always thought, like, man, they got these songs that's out in the 90s that people were actually doing, I'm like, dances and yeah, dancing man. to them, like, yeah. about some dope. Hey, bro. Yeah. For real. It's like, you know, people actually, I'm like, created one, you know, dance for your song, right? But i like, y'all created it. Right. I don't know, you know, uh, tell me. People oh, were Eddie Bob. Yellow, 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 yeah, yeah, yellow. Yeah, dances and shit. Yellow would create, you know, Yellow was just, uh, he was a character, man, and... and the way he talked. If you go uh, and just hang out in my hood one day and just have a conversation with people, everybody really talks the way he talked. You know what I'm saying? Just for some reason. Hmm. They, they if you go on six of wrong, they talk so how I he talked. I know Wayne influenced the world, dog, but you go in our hood, dog, that, that dude, the influence that Yellow had on, on our hood, Man, it's crazy, bro. Yeah, it like, just, he just just had a, a hell of a. Oh, but still to this day, still, to this, still day. to this day, it's almost a like lot a, of, a language. A lot of them the dudes never saw y'all in their life, bro. They talk just like him, bro. They real right. and everything just like him, bro. The crazy part is, I heard of his name, but I never knew what he actually, actually, I mean, looked like. Yeah. Until the internet. What? Wow. Yeah, I, I got heard his name, but I never yeah. knew what he actually looked okay. like. Okay. So, okay. so I like okay. Hey, but then I start looking at I'm mean, like YouTube, they start having stories about them. But mm -hmm. I always said, like, you know, you can't have the real story unless it mm -hmm. unless the people right. hear from both most, of y'all. Most of that right. shit on the internet you see be cap. It be it be <laughs> motherfuckers who just trying to they ain't even had enough decency like 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 you doing, my guy, just to sit down and have a conversation with us, but they'll just create some bullshit ass story just to get some uh views or likes or whatever. Yeah, but, clickbait. Yeah, Changing. you know, most of that shit, people don't, they even twist it up a story or whatever. Right. And, you know, sometimes that shit used to bother me, but then I, I realized to just let that shit go because if I, I, I'll be bothered every day if I allow some bullshit to bother me like that because that shit ain't going to stop. If a motherfucker could get 20, 50,000 likes by t telling a bullshit story, then that's what they're they going to do. do. Yeah. yeah. And before my platform, you know, I don't even try to, like, you know, I'm like promote. You know, it been all in no beef and the negative. So I kind of ask, I mean, Molly questions like, you know, I don't want to ask. Right. I don't get into full depth because I'm still a firm believer. What happens in the streets should actually stay in the streets. It should never touch yeah. in there. Like, cause, because I remember when I was young, you know, you didn't even know who killed somebody. Like, you know, and like if you did know, you right. posted, you know, holding man. information and like, look. Keep that shit to, to yourself, right? Because Life like it's different though. You motherfuckers, like they want you. And, to know, and these people want to be known killers. Right. I'm like, thanks. So you want to go to jail fast? I'm I'm, I'm confused like a motherfucker, dog. Cause I mean, they had internet before I got locked up. You know, I was gone six and a half years. But when I came home, and this dude like handed me the phone and showing me different shit going on, I'm like, God damn, this shit done got goofy as a motherfucker. Nigga really actually on different, TV uh, talking about imagine. who he done deleted and talking about, talking about who he saw deleted and all this shit. Yeah, man, you you trying to go to the penitentiary. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, they a little bold, now. Huh? All for to get more people to watch their channel or this, that, and the other. Man, you dry ratting on the cool, man. <laughs> and the crazy part is, I didn't actually, in my first month, I'm like, I didn't think Trim, New Orleans artists was going to actually join, a twin, I mean, actually join able to Trim because, you know, New Orleans is a different city from the other ones. For we real. small. Like, you know, it, it, like a lot of the police officers on the force went to school with us. Yeah. Or, yeah. or kept us. So, like, it's, it was not hard to find us. Right. And so when you rapping about what you did, New Orleans not that big, so everybody know you did it. 
Mm-hmm. Right? So you just kind of read it on yourself. <laughs> then you won't cry when you go to jail. Don't cry right. now. You didn't, hey, but you didn't already win with your move. <laughs> that shit crazy, man. I don't understand. What the fuck make you all get on here and talk about some shit you did? Like those people don't have family or the police don't watch the same. They just, they just like us. Yeah, but I feel like that I'm about them interviews. I be like, y'all, yeah, but y'all doing some different stuff now mm-hmm. with these interviews. Because like, y'all don't know, like, everybody's kid to someone. And, yeah. and like, especially in this city, they be like, one out of five people are probably a killer. So you know and you don't know who he kid to some, yeah you so don't if you know them you know somebody yeah, know you them, on the internet right? talking about some shit that you did nine to six to somebody family member you don't know what's coming behind that I literally watch interviews where an interviewer then asks the person they interview have you ever killed somebody and this stupid motherfucker <laughs> dumb enough to answer it. man <laughs> nigga better not ask me no more that shit like that. first of all <laughs> me personally I would not ask no one that because. Man, I don't think the interviewers know when you like it be like when you do something like that, you have to bring, you know, your camera equipment mm. yeah. to the court now. You know, yeah. because that's part of the investigation. Um, bro. So oh, basically, okay. you're a rat too. Yeah, you part of that. You part hey, but you have to copy. Like yeah, you yeah, asked this you person this shit. question and he told you. So you gotta get on the stand now and tell him he told you that too. <laughs> on your camera. I don't think they realize the thing. But like, far as the streets, I'm gonna ask y'all this before we know. Actually, before we wrap it up, like, you know, hey, but y'all saw, you know, hey, like both of y'all from Uptown, yeah. And so y'all saw, you know, some real gangsters, the best of them, like all the people who they naming and everything. Like, do you think, hey, but the streets is one? I'm like myth because you know, hey, but a lot of people who was like some cold killers and different things like that. Some of them actually read it. Some of them actually didn't actually. Actually, follow it, but the gold, it but all but at the streets was you know right. supposed to go by. Mm-hmm. And so, how do y'all feel about that? You know, because like you know, all these kids watching you know YouTube and these interviews, and but thinking these people some real gangsters, but a lot of them dudes didn't even follow. I'm like the rules. Hmm. Man, I, it all it's, it's all coming down to the camera and the mic, man. What a motherfucker do? I believe half of these dudes. The way that they allow the internet to pimp them, I believe half of these dudes will sell their body for a dollar or, or some likes, you know, because, I mean, it, it just it's just out there, man. You, you don't put your business or nobody else's business on camera. You know, just like I said earlier, if, if, <coughs> if, if I'm watching it, what make you think this, this police or this, this narcotic investigator Watch it, not watching it too. He's just like me. He like hip hop. He like videos and documentaries. So you know they watching it too. You gotta un, you gotta just be mindful of what you willing to talk about, what you willing to sacrifice for some views, some likes, and for a few dollars. You know what I'm saying? And the crazy part is, but it, like you know, it, but everybody telling all these stories actually became one big trend. And so they got mm. people like actually ready to. Ready to come home from jail and tell a tell a story. Is that actually make up story that don't don't even, they <laughs> yeah. lie it don't even be true? Huh? Just to be on that motherfucker, right. dog. I be like, God damn, bro. But you know, it ain't. It ain't I don't. Me personally, I don't feel comfortable talking about it. nothing that happened in the streets until Man, until to, some repercussions come back from that. You know, motherfuckers gonna keep on running off at the mouth. But I promise you, when you hear about somebody got locked up because of an interview they did, the niggas gonna Somebody see. just did, and they still doing it. Yeah. Um, uh, what your boy was on, Vlad? What his name? Hey, but Keefy D. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah they took all, everything you. he said off uh, Vlad and took it there. Right. Yeah, Keefy D a goofy. He wanted to go to jail, man. It's but it's a lot of people following that over, hey, but just trying to get paid. Like, man, I'm about right. to do this interview. It ain't, it ain't hey, but give me 20 k I'm about to tell him about a murder. Like, it what? ain't worth it, man. You know where the value's at. You know that the value was that you keep your mouth shut about whatever you saw or whatever you did. I was lost when I first saw his interview. I'm like, he really admitted that he was in the car when the dude was shooting at Tupac. Like, was trying to kill. Well, I actually killed Tupac. Shit. I've been, I heard about him. And I know but he him, really but admitted. Like, he like, man, that. I was in the car. I'm like, wait. I'm like, these dudes uh-huh. different. <laughs> yeah, the internet is, is, is really different. I had to really um, get up to par with what's going on when I came home. You know, y'all did a real good job of that. Just like, man, 
watch that, don't do that, do that. You know what I'm saying? So I just kind of like been following the code, following It's a different lead. world, dog. Even six years ago, it was different. I ain't got a lot of you. The internet, you know what I'm saying? This actually, shit. I'm like exposed a lot of, you know, old, old rappers too. Cause like, you know, back in the day, you know, but rappers didn't like kind of, I'm like, do all them interviews and, mm. and like do certain things. So, and so now, you know, People don't really have no PRs or nothing. So like, you know, these rap, like, like these old, you know, rappers that been out just going on these interviews and saying anything. And you looking like, mm -hmm. hey, but that person ain't like how they was rapping, like you know, in the nineties. Like, mm -hmm. hey, but you looked at this person a certain way. Mm -hmm. Hey, but now you watching them interviews like, nah, that ain't, mm -hmm. damn. Yeah, it'll, it'll, it'll definitely exposure, you know. If you flaw, it's gonna come out. Facts, <laughs> super facts. <laughs> yeah, it's, For real, and they kind of, I'm like exposing themselves. It's like, wow, like, dang, yeah, but you really did that. I'm proud. <laughs> but anyways, you know, wrapping yeah. it up, you know, like, you know, hey, but like, what's next, you know, hey, but with the album, you know, hey, but hey, but brand new, <laughs> I'm like video about to drop, hey, but like, do y'all plan on like dropping merch, hey, but like, you know, yeah, hey, but signing artists. Definitely dropping merch. We always have merch. Oh, uh, we got books that his both our books ready, but we're trying to figure out what route we want to take to release them. You know what I'm saying? Also, we have a, a movie that's that's wrote, strips everything ready. We just looking for the right director not to fuck with it. You know what I'm saying? The hold up for a minute was tech coming home. It was too much, you know, to try to do by myself or whatever. He home now and everything's still on the table. So Joe, Spike, oh, uh, what was that boy? Oh, uh, Lucky, all oh, y'all directors, holla at As y'all can see, I'm telling you this. I this. don't have the ankle monitor on. Go, Vol, all oh, y'all boys, man. My PO just <laughs> gave me the green light, and actually, man, you the first interview that we did, and I appreciate that. Um, in New Orleans, man. This, yep. this right now today. What's today's date there? Because this ain't going to drop. April 6th. Six. Today, April 6th, man, this was my first time in New Orleans. You know what I'm saying? And uh, my PO gave me the uh, the green light to travel. So, you know, I, we no longer have to turn down shows because um, y'all got tired of doing shit by itself. That ain't really how we move. You know what I'm saying? And uh, now it's up there, man. We can go in and finish getting the bag, you dig? So y'all can uh, holler at Rob Shaw or Ronald Bell. Y'all want UNLV booked for any event we we do. I'm talking about baptisms and everything. Holler at your boy. Yeah, well, you need to see y'all at that. Yeah, because it real, was kind of rough when I first came home. Uh, you know, they wasn't letting me move. And, you know, people went to booking us and shooting us money. And, and we wind up having to shoot the money back to them because... My PO was rejecting my travel permit, but um, you know now that she see that I'm on the the, the um, path that I'm on, you know I ain't just fucking off. She gave me a little rope to move around and make my money. You know what I'm saying? So it's on now. Nah. And I also want to say this, hey, but you know I want to give one big, 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 big shout out, hey, but to y'all because you know he was a man of his word. He said, you know what? Hey, but soon as tech. Um, can start moving around, you're going to be the first interview. Facts, though. And he said this like months first, ago. I appreciate you, too, from keeping your word and making it possible for us to, you know what I'm saying, to come do this show. And, dog. like, you know, he actually tried to get me to come you know to Houston, saying? but, yeah. you know, I told him, you know, I got a lot going on, right? Yep. That's why I could travel. <laughs> but, like, he, he been trying to, you know, and like, right. get this done. And, you know, and, and like, the dope thing is, you know, hey, but y'all could have went anywhere and did an interview. Right. But y'all came to me, so you know, shout people, out there. man. We just want to fucking support our people, man. You dig? Facts. But, like, you know. That's what's important. Moving forward, like, actually, what do y'all think Ebba New Orleans actually need? Like, for us, like the Unity. Music, Unity. Like the that's, that's, that's what they need, dog. I think we got all the talent, all the producers, everything in, in, in place. But I think if, if we move as one, it'll be a little more easier, bro. Yeah, I would say the same thing. We need... The, the desire to walk on side of each other instead of one to walk one in front of the other. Facts. You know what I'm saying? If we can do that and present ourselves collectively to anybody or to anywhere, we're forced to be reckoned with. Because you think about these guys that's out here in New Orleans right now, man. All of these dudes, hot. I like them. I like, I like most of these cats that's doing their thing in New Orleans. 
I fuck with it. You know, even if I don't see you, that don't mean if. But if I run across your shit, cross my timeline, I'ma support it. I'ma like it. You know, I I don't believe in you know bullshit or whatever. You know what I'm saying? It just do your thing, and just that's it. You know, stay busy, do your thing. But we gotta we gotta walk together. You know, it's, and our city kind of been like that. You know, one person want to be out there and and walk in front of everybody, but we stronger as a unit. You know what I'm saying? No matter what, we definitely strong as a unit. As as a uh, UNLV, you know, without naming names, we can tell you on his hands, my hands, his toes, and my toes, the people that we didn't actually pulled up and let them ride with us. You know what I'm saying? Without actually trying to, you know, take credit for their careers or whatever. Facts. But that's just how we move because Check it, our track record, it man. feel better. You know that, like, damn, like, like that's my kid, or you know that's my nigga. He doing his thing. You know we rocked out together like that. So that's just how we gotta move as a unit, as a city, man. Also, you know, and but actually before we leave, you know, I always want to ask y'all this, you know, and but I know you know, and but y'all had y'all know, and but ups and downs, and but y'all, and but y'all, and but y'all, I'm like differences, and but actually with Bird, man. But like speaking on some positive note. Do y'all always think like, man, dude gave us opportunity? I always think yeah, that. Yeah. I always, always, bro. How could we forget? I mean, a lot of people paint a bad picture between our relationship with, with Cash Money, and it, and it never was like that, bro. You know what I'm saying? Me personally, I credit Sugar Slim for my style because he groomed me and brought out, you know, my style that brought the style out of me. When we would be in the studio, I'd be doing things one way. You know, we, me and Yellow always clowned around singing. We might, we might say "What's up to you," but we gonna sing "What's up to you." Just saying it in, in, in a singing tone. And Slim caught that that we was like, you know, able to hold a note and hold a melody. And he he always told me to use that. You know, add that into it. And use that. You know, so I, I credit Slim for my style definitely. I'm gonna ask you, Tech, because you know, you, hey, but your name always in the middle of this part too. So, do you think that, hey, but the beef between Baby and I'm like Yellow Boy, hey, but could have been, I'm like prevented? Uh, yeah, it could have been prevented. I would say it could have been prevented. It, um, like I said, <coughs> Yellow, Yellow was kind of high headed. And he he took things to the extreme most of the times, but uh, I would say if they was to sit down and talk about it. But during that time, we was all talent, no business. And on the other hand, Baby then was all business, but they really didn't have the knowledge of how to run the business the way they have it now. So it, you know, the stuff that happened, it was bound to happen anyway. You know what I'm saying? As far as the disagreements and and we going out separate ways. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, you know, like with anything, you know, I I, I kind of look at things on a spiritual level nowadays. That you know, when stuff happened, it just don't happen for, by coincidence. It was meant to happen. You know what I'm saying? Gotcha. And also, oh, but last but not least, tell the world. I'm like, what well, can they find you on social media? And I'm like, everywhere else. Uh, Tech 9 UNLV. You can find me on all social media platforms with that right there. Tech 9 UNLV. Lil Ya UNLV 3 on Instagram and Yafet UNLV on Facebook. Uh, our website is in is being constructed, uh, re going through construction stage right now so y'all hold out on that part but for booking 504-957-6598 Ronald Bell holler no more restrictions y'all know Rob show holler at Rob as well we could hit that road now uh, you know I features get at us hey, but book y'all now book us <laughs> <laughs> all this trying to get on holler man holler oh, but alright we done it's oh, up but that, I appreciate y'all it's up there. Appreciate Nola you, Z and uh, UNLV up yes, sir. You wait, man. If you ain't doing an interview with Nola Z, what you doing an interview for?